Xavier Kasukawe, a former member of ZANU-PF, stated on Monday that Zimbabwe cannot afford another five years of President Emerson Umnimkogwa's misrule, which is characterized by toxic political divisions, a failing economy, and societal unrest. Tyson, aka Kasukawe, in ZANU-PF circles, said in a statement to officially announce plans to submit his papers to the nomination court sitting tomorrow that, if elected, he would work to bring the politically divided nation together through an intra-Zimbabwe dialogue process that is above politics. The former ZANU-PF commissar claimed in a lengthy letter addressed to Zimbabweans that his battle was against threat and his goal was to restore hope for the nation. Kasukawe stated, my said choice to run as an independent candidate stems from two squandered opportunities. Our party congress failed to permit fair competition for the presidency in December 2017 and in September 2022. As a result, it was unable to bring the membership together, let go of the past, and find peace for the sake of our magnificent revolution's future. We continue to see exclusionary politics and persecution of members who devotedly serve the people. The party, the government, and the late founding president C.D. Robert Gabriel Mugabe, despite promises to let bikes be bygones after November 2017 and to restore the legacy and values of our liberation movement. Our position was and remains clear that C.D. Umnengogwa could never have won and cannot win any leadership post in a fair and open political process, the speaker continued. All Zimbabweans. According to Kasukawe, who is in exile in South Africa, gave Umnengogwa and ZANU-PF the freedom to rule after the coup, but he wasted the goodwill and dismally failed to keep his pledges. The former minister of local government claimed that Umnen Gogwa had fallen short of his pledges to provide universal health care, electricity, youth employment, educational reforms. A modern railroad system, mechanize, modernize, and expand the economy, as well as to implement security sector reforms that encourage global re-engagement. The party's concern is whether CD Umnen Gogwa should be given another five years to fail at the expense of the people of Zimbabwe. The nation can no longer withstand another five years of poisonous political conflict, a faltering economy, and social unrest. He declared that it was time to resolve the issue by returning it to the voters during this election so that they may decide between fear and hope. As the leader of ZANU-PF and state president, Umnengogwa's actions, according to Kasukawe, run counter to the liberation movement's essential principles of inclusive, open, and transparent politics. He alleged that his tenure and leadership style have so far left our party structures, the main wing, the women's league, and the youth league, badly exposed and threatened by corrupt. Foreign, hero-worshipping, for ED structures, which undermine elected national, provincial, and district leaders and are disrespectful to our traditional leaders. He claimed that although the party institutions lacked funding, the for ED dubious organizations had unrestricted access to Umningogwa and his resources. He stated that C.D. Yumnim Gogwa needed to give the party a chance to decide between hope and fear. The future and the past. It was ironic, according to Kosukawe, because one of the arguments made to support Yumnim Gogwa's assault on the late Mugabe was that he was surrounded by criminals. Paradoxically, he claimed, the gold mafia expose, the detention of prominent individuals for gold smuggling, and the extravagant lifestyles of his family, some of whom have never worked a day in their lives, show that people very close to C.D. Mningogwa engage in various illegal industries. The claims that members of his family and close friends have privileged access to foreign cash at the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe have never been refuted or disputed. It is well known that his family has taken over the gold mining industry from Sendawana Marengwa to Mokaha Mutoko, including holding stock in government corporations. He said that the government was keeping quiet about unreported diamond shipments and that Tumningkogwa's family had taken control of the importation, distribution, and sale of petrol. You are all aware that practically all of the multi-billion dollar Belarus agreements include members of his family and allies, Kasukawe added. They said that President Mugabe was surrounded by criminals despite the obscenes of their newfound wealth, as you have seen. You are aware that individuals close to C.D. Umnengogwa have export permits and are exporting lithium despite the fact that doing so is illegal and without paying taxes to the treasury. The state must stop being looted. He added that the president's refusal to obey the party's structures and resolutions was further evidenced by the president's reversal of the landmark land reform and indigenization processes by returning substantial tracts of land to farmers associated with Imnengogwa. 
No matter what the title, he remarked, such cardinal decisions and resolutions taken in Congress cannot be changed at the whims and caprices of an individual. He does not own ZANU-PF personally. It has been a typical occurrence that the Umnengogwa associates and family step in to claim the deposits before others as soon as gold and other rare minerals are discovered. According to Kasukawe, it was obvious that the Zimbabwean dollar had lost value and was still falling rapidly. He claimed that while the Umnengogwa regime tried to control the economy through propaganda, Zimbabweans were suffering. The Mugabe supporter stated, C.D. Umnengogwa compensates the elite of the public service selectively, but the majority of the civil service is languishing in abject poverty despite their enthusiastic dedication and patriotism. No effort has been made to provide an explanation as to why C.D. Umnengogwa can purchase over 800 campaign cars but cannot provide ambulances or cancer equipment at our referral hospitals. This illustrates his lack of concern for Zimbabwean suffering. In addition to protecting the right of our people to choose their own leaders, Kasukawe called for a return to the principles of the liberation fight. Both inside and outside ZANU-PF, the political, social, and economic reprieve our people experienced under the government of national unity from 2009 to 2013 should be a long-lasting phenomenon brought about by an inclusive governing culture, ushered in by a generational consensus. He stated, Zimbabweans must discover one another through an internal Zimbabwe dialogue process beyond the politics of conquest predicated by our highly competitive, frequently poisonous, and contentious election politics. Beyond his run for the highest position, Kasukawe stated that he hoped to lead or be a key part of this constructive engagement process. He also urged Zimbabwe's leadership to be refreshed while establishing a new vision and objectives to bring back the nation's greatness. Zimbabwe must establish itself as a responsible member of the international community and as a member of the world's community of nations. He remarked, we need to respect the rights of all citizens and implement and maintain the constitution. As Zimbabweans, Kasukawe urged us to set aside our disagreements from the past. Love one another, own our mistakes, and undo the harm we had done both internally and externally. In order to battle the twin evils of sanctions and corruption, we must ensure a cohesive response. He stated, like other previous battles in our history, the Kukrahandi subject needs a lasting solution and a peaceful conclusion, he remarked. In order to serve the majority in a transparent and accountable manner and to deliver its benefits. Kasukawe also called for reforms to Zimbabwe's national institutions. We are urged to strengthen institutions in accordance with the constitution and in keeping with global and pan-African norms. Abuse of governmental institutions must end, he emphasized. The time had come, according to Kasukawe, to bring back Zimbabwe's economy in a way that included everyone and left no one behind. To ensure that everyone participates as agents of growth, we must empower the majority. Zimbabweans ought to be at the center of economic development and resource exploitation. Zimbabwe is our shared property, he declared. According to Kasukawe, the ancient metropolis of Great Zimbabwe is evidence of Zimbabwe's rich history of architects and builders. Let's unleash Zimbabweans' full potential to take part in the impending infrastructural revolution, he urged. Recently, Kasukawe declared that Umnengogwa would be his opponent on August 23rd in this year's presidential election. Also, it was reported that the exiled former MT Darwin MP was seeking backing from the majority party. Former Central Intelligence Organization agent Kosukowe gained notoriety after being appointed to important positions in the executive branch and the ruling party. Prior to ZANU-PF collapsing at the height of the contest to succeed Mugabe, he served in the ZANU-PF Politburo and as a cabinet minister. After the coup, he left the nation and went into exile. He temporarily returned in January 2018 and was detained on suspicion of corruption, however, the accusations were later thrown out by Harare court, prompting him to leave the country once more. After issuing an arrest warrant for Kasukawe in October 2020, the government also requested his extradition from South Africa, Interpol rejected this request as political meddling.